Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'd like to welcome you to this Philips Lighting webinar held in association with Smart Cities World. My name is Nani Rock, and I am Executive Editor at Smart Cities World. And joining me today is Matt Wakelam, the Head of Infrastructure and Operations at the City of Cardiff. Hi, Matt. Hi, And Andreas Nobluk, Alliance Manager, Public Segment for Philips Lighting. Hi, Andreas. Ben. So this webinar is the result of a collaborative piece of work between Philips Lighting and Smart Cities World that took place in the autumn of last year. Here we launched a survey that polled 150 thought leaders around the world to uncover perceptions and understanding of smart cities and the Internet of Things from the viewpoint of different stakeholders. It also looked to identify the drivers and blockers to smart city implementation and how the latter could be eased to enable successful dynamic cities of the future. Now, Andy and Matt are here to provide practical hands-on experience and knowledge. Andy is representing, obviously, Philips Lighting, their side of things, and the company's experience, expertise, and vision. While Matt, he's speaking from the eyes of the customer, of somebody who's, had smart, uh, who's got a smart city roadmap and has implemented first steps into reaching their goals. So, Let's quickly have a look at some of the key findings that the survey um, unearthed. So, first of all, Singapore, London, and Barcelona, pretty much not surprisingly, came out as the top smart cities, with Singapore leading with 14.4%. You can see that on your slide on your desktop. Um, I want to ask you, how are citizens encouraged to engage and what a difference, what difference does it make? Yeah, I think it's absolutely crucial because lighting is a public service, uh, especially street lighting. Um, cities provide that uh, to create a sense of security and a sense of service for citizens. Uh, the, the challenge always is that uh, uh, citizens notice it when it's not working properly. So, for example, if the light is out or if the quality of light is poor. And I think uh, engaging citizens in that uh, process of upgrading the lighting infrastructure, it's really important to think about these topics beforehand and uh, you know, making sure that the, the quality of light uh, is, is, is great from the beginning, that, uh, say, for example, uh, without glare and uh, color temperature, mm -hmm. and uh, really making sure that uh, you know, you listen to uh, citizens beforehand before you, you put a, an infrastructure in place. Mm -hmm. But then I think it's equally important to make sure that you listen to citizens and give them a, a sense of transparency. For example, if there is a fault, fix it quickly. You know, identify it, fix it quickly, and provide uh, status updates to citizens. I think that's that's really important. All right, so Matt, can we have some uh, context here? Um, can you, can you talk us through Cardiff's decision to embrace a smarter, more sustainable future? And um, was lighting always going to be, you know, that, that first port of call, you know, the backbone uh, 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 from which everything else springs? So, really, Cardiff's been had smart technology since 1990s, uh, and as you can see on this slide. Uh, a lot of cities generally have a have a scoot or and an urban traffic control system, which controls traffic lights to enable us to move vehicles around the city more efficiently and more effectively based on cues. You know, and we we manage that system. We've got aspects where we can put systems in place uh, called uh, things like green waves, which enable us to empty football stadiums quickly and promptly and more efficiently. So we can put those systems in place. So. You know, we've already had smart te technology since the 1990s, and that's developed over a number of years, primarily in the transport-related area. So, as you can see, we've got real-time information on bus shelters that came in just before the uh, millennia, uh, and more recently, we've now introduced car park management systems. So we know how you know we advertise on the on the network where where cars are, uh, spaces are available. More recently, we've we've also started to look at other agendas. So we've got a smart parking sensor 
indicating where we have free parking spaces on street. So each individual parking space is actually got a sensor and that's sent to an app which enables drivers uh, to, to find a parking space to save them driving around the city looking for parking spaces. From my perspective, it's, it's more about the, you know, what we can do for the Safians uh, and the citizens like Safian in Cardiff is, is paramount to, to, to improving people's lives. Uh, although every citizen obviously benefits from improved street lighting, certain groups will benefit more.